I think it it, 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 it was funny. So um, I was talking to one of the futurists, and 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 I'm, I'm curious to know your perspective. So he said, Vishal, you know what? Future would not be of chefs, but souprenures and sandwichpreneurs, right? So he was, so he was seeing the writing on on the wall that you would not, we would not be seeking us a chef to make us food. We right. would be looking for sandwichpreneurs and souprenures to. So you will be really good at your one craft, and somehow the ecosystem would support you. And and I think you, in a way, you are supporting ecosystems, uh, whether it comes to artists, whether it comes to developers uh, or tech talent. I'm I'm curious, what's what's your take? Like, would 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 you think? Would you agree to this perspective? And what's your take on that? I mean, I think we see hyper specialization going on, and ultimately, everybody is gearing how how our economy works around the preference of the consumer and the ease of things for the consumer. So if we look at the changes in the last year, food delivery, I mean, food delivery is not a new thing. You could order a pizza 30 years ago, but now you can order anything for places that don't deliver all of a sudden are able to deliver and you, you can get anything you want almost universally within a very short period of time. It, you know, even if the place doesn't facilitate that, you go on TaskRabbit or or a similar service, Instacart, and you've got somebody who's gonna go get it for you. And and I think when you think about that, that's the only part of the economy where there are a lot of humans still needed. Um, that that's really important. I mean, that's why Amazon is just hiring and hiring and hiring and hiring, which is great. And that and but at a certain point, just like Uber and Lyft. Or when they get the when they get the technology right, all those people they hired gone, and and not in like a five year period. Once the self driving cars are sufficiently safe, it's so much cheaper than having to deal with drivers. They're going to convert very quickly. Interesting. So now let's let's talk about your book book a bit. So um, game changer. So um, walk us through. Why write this book and walk us through a typical reader that you write it for? You wrote it for. So, when we set out to do this, what we really wanted to do was share what we saw across all these different industries and what are the common things that top talent wants, and simultaneously, we, we can all be top talent or we can all be good talent and we can all be better talent. So, the book is is essentially broken into two halves. One is how do you make your company more ten x. And how do you manage these people who are who are really 10x? And what are they looking for? And what are the and and what do they care about? And how do you relate to them? And how do you give them what you want to to both attract, hire, and retain them, um, and manage them? And then the second half of the book is flipping it around and saying, okay, now you know how to do that, but you're also talent. Each one of us is talent, and we need to think of ourselves that way. And the same things that they needed from you. You need from somebody else, and you have to start to be able to advocate for yourself in the right ways to be able to get that, so that you can continue to get better. So, as a really easy example, um, a lot of ten Xers, most ten Xers, really value feedback because they want to be getting better all the time. So, if they're not doing something well, they may not. It may not feel great in the moment when you say, "Hey, you know, could you do this a little bit differently next time?" Because this wasn't a great way to do it. But most of them, a true 10xer, wants that feedback. They want to know it because they can improve once they have that information. So if you think about 10xers as as people who want feedback, and you want to be a 10xer, or you want to be more 10x, even if you can never be a 10xer, you now need to open yourself up to feedback, and that's a hard thing. But this is, the, you know, we actually have notes in there, like uh, templates of how do you approach your boss if they're not giving you enough feedback? How do you how do you talk to them about saying? you know, a, a once a year performance review is lovely, but I would love to, you know, have 20 minutes of your time once a month so that I can continuously be learning and seeing how I'm doing on improving things. Um, and there's lots of that. I use that as one use case, but there's lots of examples of how people who have these qualities, what, what else goes along with them? So they're lifelong learners. They love problem solving. I can tell you that there are moments where I have our clients say to us, oh, that that job, that's really boring. I need $300 an hour if I'm going to do that. That thing, 
That's really interesting. I, I don't even care if I have to pay to work on that. I don't care what I get paid. I want to do that. And that's a that's a trait of a 10 Xer. They love they love the feedback. They approach things with curiosity. They love problem solving. They have a very impressive EQ to go along with their IQ. You can take the smartest person, the best developer in the world, and if they can't communicate well, they're of almost no use to me. And I think that for most companies, they're not. And you can also take somebody who's a very good developer, but not the best, who's a great communicator and have successful engagement after engagement with them. So it is important to balance the soft skills with the hard skills. Let me pause there and see if you had any follow-up questions. No, I think that that makes sense. So um, I'm curious, what is what is 10 Xer? Uh, okay. I'm glad you asked because not everybody is familiar with that term. So that's a term that came out of the software world and it, it, it stems from the belief that a 10 Xer can actually deliver 10 times the value of their peers. And people think, you know, there's a lot of stuff written that it's a myth. Um, we've seen it in action. I've seen a team of three people replace a team of 33 people and build build something better, faster. Um, and and it, it, this does exist. Um, and it, it's not easy to find. I don't really want to debate whether they do exist because I know they do. Um, and not every 10Xer is delivering 10 times the amount of code or anything like that. Sometimes a 10Xer is the one who sits there for two days before they write a line of code and comes up with the really elegant solution so that they can deliver a product with fewer lines of, of code, but that's much, you know, a, a much better solution to the problem being posed. So these are these are people who are are hungry, curious, love problem solving, um, uh, deliver more value than their peers, usually by by a significant factor, sometimes an actual order of magnitude. And um, and they're amazing and they're out there and most of them don't know that they are interesting so i I'm, I'm curious so if i am uh, i want to be a 10xer and i'm not sure if i am being a 10xer as per your, your, your definition so do you have certain um, some tenets or i think you shared some of those qualities uh, uh, a few minutes back but i'm curious that um, if i want to be like a 10xer or i'm almost borderline like do you have some insights okay do if you do this xyz maybe you are in that club i'm curious yeah i mean it's not as prescriptive as now you crossed over and you are that's mm. it, it, there's no there's no test that that like distinctly says that you've now become 10xer but we did create a quiz on the book website that allows you to see how 10x your company is and how 10x yourself you, you yourself are. So there are ways to do that, but we also we put in a lot of prescriptive um, information in there. So at the end of each chapter in that first half of the book, we talk about what a 10x manager does in a given situation, and then we talk about what a 0x manager does and what a 5x manager does. And by seeing those side by side, you start to get a very good sense of what it means and how you behave in a way that yields these great results from the people that you're trying to work with. And by the way, that's making you more of a 10X manager. So um, I think we have a lot of very detailed prescriptive information on, on how, to, how to advance things. Um, but you know, uh, you know, one thing is never be defensive. That is not a trait of a 10Xer. Mm. Ne never, doesn't matter whether you were wrong, you were right, you had responsibility for it, you didn't approach it with curiosity. And there are moments where you still need to defend yourself um, if something is not being portrayed accurately. But just by starting out with, you know, if somebody's like, well, what did you mean by that? It's like, oh, let me clarify. Let me, let me, I'm sorry, I didn't make it clear. Let me see if we can come to a, um, an understanding because that, that approaching it with curiosity often, number one, it allows you to find, did, did you actually do something wrong? But it also brings down what would be otherwise, uh, you know, sort of escalating toward conflict. Mm. 